What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. Every now and then I like to do a good DevOps video on my channel because I have a number of DevOps viewers. And amidst these viewers, I get a lot of questions about Golang because that's a popular language with DevOps engineers. And the questions are mainly, hey Travis, should I learn Go? Is that a good language to learn now? And if so, how do I learn it? What are the best resources out there? So I decided to put a quick video together to answer three questions. One, what is Go and why should you learn it? Two, should that be your first programming language that you learn? And three, how do you learn it? So three is gonna be the bulk of this video. I'm gonna provide you with five solid resources through which you can learn Go no matter what stage or level you're at. So the first resource is gonna be very beginner and the fifth one is gonna be very advanced and wherever you fall in between, you'll find the perfect resource for you. So let's get started. So first question, what is Go and why should you learn it? So Go was originally designed at Google in 2007 by three of their engineers. These engineers were noticing a lot of growth and they needed a language that would handle the complexity of the things they were working on. So they created their own language called Go. And then in 2012, Go became an open source project and was released to the public. And since then, it's been adopted and growing rapidly. And like I said before, it's a big favorite with DevOps engineers. So what is Golang used for? So Golang is more a systems programming language. Some of the popular infrastructure tools that use Golang include Kubernetes, Docker, and Prometheus. Go is also popular in the cloud, like cloud-based applications. It's popular with automation. It's used in a lot of CLIs. If you've used uh, kubectl or kubectl, whatever you like to call it, that's written in Go. And it's also used in like robotics and AI and I think some games. But for the most part, I like to still see it as a systems programming language. And before everybody gets mad, it's also, yes, used in web applications. So it powers websites. There are Go frameworks out there. In fact, my own website is in Hugo, which is a static site generator. So it's becoming a very versatile tool. Now, why is it popular and why should you consider using it? Well, it's a very easy language to learn. The way I like to describe it is it's Python mixed with C++ because it's a very low level language, but the syntax is very easy like Python. Another reason why it's popular is because it's simple. The creators wanted to create a simple language, not something huge and massive like Java's ecosystem, but something small that just has exactly what it needs. And it comes with this standard library of packages that allow you to do so many things. It's like the Swiss army knife for Go. So if you need formatting or cryptography or an OS package or a strings package or a regex or you need to run a server, it's got all of this stuff in the standard library. So it's not a massive language. It's a very particular language with a lot of tools to work with. And that makes it easier to learn. It hasn't had 25 years of people adding more and more features to it. It instead has a very particular small ecosystem that you can learn pretty quick. And the syntax is readable. Finally, it's very, very fast. And it has these Go routines built in that provide concurrency which means you can do multiple things at one time. You can have multiple processes executing independently of each other. Now, should you learn Golang and should it be your first language? Well, I think you should learn Golang, but not as your first language. And it's not because Golang's hard, it's just that Golang is a more particular thing, right? If you're learning your first programming language or you're learning to program, you're probably not gonna wanna pursue Go because the other more popular languages like Python, like JavaScript will provide you with way more job availability in job listings than something like Golang. And the Golang jobs will probably require you to be a more experienced developer. So if you don't know how to program and you're looking for your very first language, don't pick Golang. It's a great language, but really not your first one that you should learn in my opinion, unless you wanna be a specialist, like you wanna just nail down Golang only and you wanna go that path, maybe, maybe that's a good path. But in general, other languages are more popular and will get you in the door faster and will probably teach you programming basics easier than Golang. And question number three, how do you learn Golang? So I'm gonna provide you, like I said at the beginning, with five resources of all skill levels. And we'll start out with none other than Steven Grider on Udemy. Now this was the first course that I took when I decided to learn Go like a year ago. I didn't know where to start. I researched a bunch of things and it led me here. So I've taken some of Steven's courses in the past. He's a great teacher. He explains, he explains things really well. And this course 
is great. What's good about it is it leaves out all of the advanced and confusing concepts that you can get into with Go, and it just teaches you the basics from Hello World to Go Routines. And he explores this standard library so that when you're done with this, you might not know everything about Go, but you'll be able to use the documentation to basically build anything you want. So it's a very beginner course, but it's going to teach you enough of Go to build like 90% of things out there with the documentation. So I enjoyed this course and I would recommend it to anyone just starting out with Go. And hey, it's only nine hours. Nine hours and you have the basics under your belt. And as always, when I talk about Udemy, never pay more than $20 for a Udemy course. I have a blog post written on how not to do that, what options that you have that almost always get you a discounted price. I'll leave the link below. And I'll leave the link below to this course if you want to check it out. So if you've got the basics down, you've finished Steven Greider's course, then you want to look at the second resource, which is Go By Example. Now what Go By Example is, is it's a reference document that provides hands-on examples of Golang features. So let's say you're like, oh, I forgot how to use pointers. Well, you can come to this resource and just click on pointers, and it's going to tell you. Go supports pointers, and then it gives you this um, example, and it gives you some instruction to the left on how to use it. Now, let's say you needed more information about functions. You forgot how to write a function for some reason. Here's an example. So this isn't a resource you would just sit down and read. This is a resource that you're going to reference. So you know the basics, but you just need some syntax instruction or a little more explanation of some kind of Go feature. You just come to Go by example and look it up. So this is the second option after the beginner course. Now the third resource, and this resource can take you very in depth with Golang and is one of the favorites of the Go community, is a book called the Go Programming Language. This is considered the Go Bible. And it says it right here, the Go Programming Language is the authoritative resource for any programmer who wants to learn Go. It really starts off with the basics that you know, but it goes really in depth on what's going on behind the scenes with Go and many, many examples of how you can use Go effectively. If you start this book, how long is this book anyway? Um, it is 1,390 pages. So you may want to get the print copy. Nobody wants to flip through that many Kindle pages. Get this book, and if you work through it, you will be a Go master when you're done with it. Or if you just want to get a little more advanced, you can flip through it and find plenty of examples of new things you didn't know about. But this book is very popular with the Go community and would be my third pick for you. Now, if you do finish this book, you're going to be pretty advanced. I would recommend at this point going to the fourth resource, which is Gopher Sizes. So Gopher Sizes is a free course by a guy named John Calhoun. And in this course, you build over 20 different mini applications, packages, and tools of all skill levels. This means you get lots of hands-on practice with building simple to intermediate apps while also moving to more advanced apps and libraries and things like Go Routines. So you'll see right here as a free course, you'll learn about channels, uh, functional operations, chaining interfaces, all this good stuff. And if you look here, here's some examples. So you got a quiz game, you got a URL shortener, uh, hacker rank problem, site, build, site map builder, CLI task manager, uh, blackjack, some Twitter stuff, um, image transforming services, building PDFs, all kind of cool projects for free. So this takes all of the great Golang that you've learned and gives you some real world practical examples of how to use it. And that's my fourth resource. My fifth resource is a course on Udemy by Trevor Soller. Hope I pronounced that correctly. But anyway, it's around building web applications with Go. Now, once you've learned Go and have all that down and you've done a lot with it, why not check out the web side of it? A lot of people say the web part of it is great. I haven't really dug into it, but I can imagine that it would be a great server side language. And you see here that you'll build a front end website using Go. You'll do user authentication. You'll allow users to reset a password. You'll build microservices. You'll build a backend API using Go. Lots of great things that you haven't explored with Go yet. So I think this will help you branch out and see some of the broader things you can do with Go. And that's my fifth pick for this video. There'll be links to all of these below. My opinion of Go, I'm a huge fan. I just don't get to use it as much as I would like. But hopefully you do if you're thinking about learning it fully recommend it. Here's five resources and I wish you the best. Leave a comment below. 
Let me know if you like Go, if you're using Go, if you plan to use it, and if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.